Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf, and you're watching The Joy of Coding. Today, we're going to be starting a brand new segment on this channel that I'm going to be calling Code Review. The idea is simple. I'm going to be finding some piece of code in the internet, commonly GitHub, and then just reviewing the code with you, the watcher. Not really reviewing it for is it good, bad, but just reading through it to understand how it works. A big part, I think, of becoming a good software engineer is understanding how to read other people's code and understanding the code. Uh, let's you then improve upon it and make it better. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a brand new custom React hook released by a fellow named, uh, well, his GitHub handle is David K Piano. It's a hook called Use Effect Reducer. It's fully written in TypeScript. So if you are curious about TypeScript, this is going to be a great video for you to kind of understand some really advanced features of TypeScript because this is a very fancy library. Shall we begin the code review? Here is the repo, here is the steeple. Uh, use effect reducer, let me first understand, let's first understand why this exists and what it does. The basic idea from reading the readme, and I've cheated because I've read ahead before this video, uh, I actually find this part a little bit confusing to read. Uh, it's saying here you import it, make an effect reducer, and then you use it. And that didn't click for me until I got to the quick start section of the readme, where it's showing the imported function here, use effect reducer being used here. It's being passed in a reducer, just like React's use reducer hook, and their count reducer is defined up here. Uh, just like the use reducer gets a state and uh, event object. Uh, and then there's a third argument exec, which was interesting and in what this use effect reducer provides. So here we're switching as we normally would with a reducer on the event type. And here in the case of an increment type, what's interesting here is this exec function, which lets you run side effects in your reducer, which is a really cool idea because you could imagine that some dispatch event prompts an API call and letting you define all of that outside of your component is really, really, really cool. And of course here you're returning the state as normal. So this is one usage where you have the reducer here and you can call exec to call side effects. So it can just console log this and not worry about it. Uh, another one is this thing called named effects. So you can actually pass in a third argument to use effect reducer here. And this has names, it has named effects. So this is a fetch from API name. So if I scroll up here, what I can see is that when the fetch event occurs, I can actually execute a named effect of fetch from API. And then use named reducer will eventually call this fetch from API type with this function and execute this code that you can then of course dispatch additional things from there. And this makes, so this is the example here where you can dispatch type fetch this fetch will go up here, call the, case fe call the case fetch, return that it's fetching the status. It'll execute this side effect called fetch from API, which will then call this, which will call this API, get the data, and it'll dispatch the resolve event with the data, which will come back up here, and then call to case and return that new data, which is very nice to see the ping pong of synchronous and asynchronous and going back and forth. So that's how the library is intended to be used. Uh, are you curious what the code looks like? So I have it checked out locally here, and the repo looks like this, very typical where you have the readme, you have package.json. Uh, it's very neat that it's using this project called TSDX, which is a library that's built to help you write TypeScript libraries. It's very neat. Um, and then of course, it's organized with a source folder and a test folder. So most of the time today, we're gonna be spending in this source index file. And of course, the first thing that you notice is that there is a whole heap of type information. So much so that I'd actually argue it's hard to figure out where the actual logic begins. Uh, luckily for us, it's using ES modules, which means that we can search for 
export to see that the export of use effect reducer is over here. So this is this use effect reducer is the same one that's being exported from here. So are you ready for this code review? This is with TypeScript, so it's going to be a little bit heavy. I'm going to try to not go too fast, but any other questions you have, definitely ask me in the comments because this is going to be probably, this is probably the worst one to start off with in terms of a code review because it's so many topics at once, but c'est la vie. So first things first, this is assuming TypeScript knowledge. And here you have here the usage of generics. So to clean this up for you non-TypeScript readers here, I can actually omit this and omit this because this is type information. And here is the function right here. It takes three arguments, effect reducer, which we saw before, right? The effect reducer is the first argument here. It takes an initial state, just like use reducer. And then here it takes an effects map. And you can see from the usage here that it's optional, right? Here we're not using it, but with the named effect, you can pass in an object to actually define that here. And that's the first thing you can notice right here, this little question mark is the way you tell TypeScript that a argument to a function is optional, such that, uh, so let me add back these other type, we'll, we'll keep that away, such that um, this allows TypeScript to know that this argument is optional. Let me add back these other types because we need that for things to work. Also, I just wanna show you here that if I undo this, uh, amazingly things still work, or, the way to check if it's still working is going into here. Uh, let's save that over here. And then we have a whole bunch of red on the side here where TypeScript is not complaining because it expected three arguments but got two because in removing that question mark, I made this required when it's in fact not. And sadly, we're not even done with the initial function argument because there's so much going on here. These angle brackets, is how you define generics in TypeScript, also in many other languages as well. Uh, generics are more confused. They sound more confusing than they are. Generics are essentially type variables. They're a way for you to store a type in a generic that you can use elsewhere, such that if you had a, uh, a string hello, there's no value in just having that string by itself. You wanna use that elsewhere, so you make it assigned to a variable like that. So now you can reuse variable, which points to hello. When you're using use effect reducer, when you're calling use effect reducer, you wanna tell it what your uh, state object looks like or whatever the generic is, and you can say it like, you know, name string. And essentially this is giving you type information that's gonna be assigned to the first generic type here such that this T state will be given this type information such that inside use effect reducer, when you use T state, when a consumer uses it, it's using this type. It's a type variable, it's a variable. They're hard, generics are hard, they're hard. But this function is defining three generics off the bat. And you can define any number of generics that you want. You might see generics named T, that's just a bad practice nowadays because it's brief, but also unreadable. Uh, because generics are types, they're just, because generics are type variables is the best way to think about it, you can name them whatever you want. And that's the case here. So it's saying this is a type state. So it's asking what is the type of the state? Um, and then you can see it being used here, like just like use reducer returns an array, right? Use reducer returns, when you call use reducer in React, use reducer, what you get back is state and dispatch right? You've used your use reduce before if you see my other videos. Um, this here is giving the return type information of this function. And the return type of this information is an array where the first argument is the state and the second argument is dispatch. So here, this generic T state is letting you define the shape of the reducer state object and then it's being reused in the returned function type information. Hopefully that connects. It's just, it's letting you say what the shape of the state should be for proper type safety. Um, you have here T event, which is the shape of a event dispatched to the reducer. 
And this is a nice feature of TypeScript where you can do, uh, what, is it, what is it called? It's called, I have it saved here. Uh, it's called a generic constraint. So rather than saying that T event could be of any, could be any shape, which T state can, T state could be just a Boolean for all this library cares. For an event, it has to at least constrain to what an event object is because VS Code is built with uh, TypeScript in mind, I can do command click to jump up to see what event object looks like. And all this is, is that it's saying it has to be an object with a property called type, which has a string, which is a very common um, event that you dispatch in Reducer. And then any other key, any other property on this interface needs to be a string and then the value can be anything. Doesn't care after that. Uh, how do I go back, there we go. So they're saying that when you call tEvent, Again, let's just do this in line because I find that easier. So T state is an object, on this object, and then T event can be an object, but it has to at least have a type called uh, uh, a type. So the T event has to at least have a type, which is a string, but it also could have foo, which is a boolean. That's what it's saying there. And then last but not least, this is the fanciest line. We are saying that an effect, which again, if you look at the example, these are effects, which is, you know, uh, where, where is it being used is really the question. It's being used in the effect reducer. Um, they can, an effect can be an object where you're passing in a type of that. But they can also just be a function. But what you're having up here is that this t-effect type has to extend the event object over here, and the event object the effect object has any properties that are strings, also has to have the type property, and it can optionally have an exact property. Um, and then what's nice, so this thing here, which was so hard to find actual documentation for, it's not actually on the TypeScript docs page, which is a failing of TypeScript. It's on a um, release of a TypeScript version. Uh, this equal thing, where is it? This equal thing is called a default type argument. And what that does is it's saying that if you don't define, when you're making, when you're using this use effect reducer and you're finding the generic types in here, uh, if you don't define that third generic type, by default, it'll be defined as this. So this type interface will be defined to T effect. And the reason for that is because the effects map, this third function argument is also optional. So to have those things be aligned, you have a default value for T effect. So that's kind of what that lets you do. And of course it's extending with constraints. And then here you're seeing that this interface takes two additional, this, this interface also takes some generic arguments. And largely what it's doing is passing this type variable into this generic, uh, this interface's generics arguments as well. So it's just passing the variables down in React parlance, that could be called prop drilling or uh, type drilling in this case. Um, that was exhausting. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of talking. Uh, hopefully you're still with me and still enjoying this dense, dense piece of code. Um, and then here you have the effect reducer, which is getting some normal type values. Initial state is constrained to the type of T state here, right? So this is the generic T state. This initial state has to be the same shape. And effects map, effects map. Great, I don't care anymore. Here's where the function bar body begins. Let's add some space just to be able to see what's going on. Here we're using use ref. The type information of use ref demands a generic to know what use ref is holding onto, a React use ref. It's holding a set. So it's holding a set, and a set takes a generic argument as well to know what's inside that set. And inside that set is an effect entity. An effect entity is a object that has these two generic information. So this set, it's essentially new set is um, uh, set dot, oops, a, a dot, what is even the, the uh, I don't even know what the argument is for set, is it a dot add, takes in an object which has the effect entity which is type status start, right? So uh, type foo status, etc. That's what it's kind of saying here, that this, this uh, 
use rep is containing a set of these objects. Then you have a wrap reducer, which I'm actually gonna get to later because it's really dense. But what's kind of neat about all this upfront typing is that when you actually read the rest of the code uh, outside this wrap reducer, there's no type information being added largely because all the types are being constrained, safe, and, and sanitized on entry such that TypeScript knows all that from the beginning and can just apply it to everything after. So everything just works as you'd expect. Um, the real meat is also in here, this wrapped reducer, which if you look all the way at the bottom here is what eventually calls, uh, uh, down here, wrap reducer is what's being passed into the actual React use reducer function. And this is where the real magic that lets you have those effects occur. An initial state and all these additional things as well. Um, I think I'm gonna stop right now because that's kind of enough meat to begin with. Uh, that was a lot to go on right now that uh, I think if I were to keep talking would kind of make your eyes roll over. Um, everything else up here is just more type information by and large and some utility functions. But I thought it was interesting to just kind of talk about those top level, real heady type information things up there. Um, truly the real magic happens inside this wrapped reducer function which lets you essentially what this library lets you do is that when a, so this is the exact function and when it's called, there's actually an array of effects that will be executed eventually in a effect. So here after dispatches are done, when this changes, all effect entities are ran and then things work according to the library. Woof, that was way more dense than I expected, but hopefully interesting to do the code review along with me. If you are curious about another half of this, let me know, but I think that's enough to get you started to reading this code base. Very neat project, very neat idea. Scares me a little bit, but it's still fun to know that this is a thing that's possible to do with React reducers and effects, merging all those concepts together. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you learned three new things. If not, I have failed and I'm sorry. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, become one and I'll have a new video in your YouTube inbox next week. Until then, stay coding.